Welcome back to The Guardian with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Happy you've allowed us to be part of your day. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Brian Bergmati is the owner of Red Leaf Ranch. He is a homesteader, artist, and author. He shares his projects and progress at Red Leaf on YouTube as well. Welcome to the program, Brian. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day and not only about to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I'll start with this. Uh, Why don't you tell us about Red Leaf Ranch and how it came about? What's the story there? Yeah, of course. Well, just for a little bit of backstory, um, I'm originally from Chicago, actually. I was born and raised in the big city, and then I moved to New York City to pursue a career in photography. But after a few years and having grown up in a big city, I just grew overwhelmed with city life and the opportunity uh, presented itself for me to move to the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, and I took the opportunity. But the goal wasn't necessarily to garden or to start a homestead. It was just to get away from New York City. But then the pandemic hit and I wasn't able to travel back to New York, which I was doing at the time to continue my photography work. So I was just kind of stuck. I had all this time all of a sudden. And with the looming uncertainty of what the food situation was going to be like because of the pandemic, I decided to learn or to start gardening and farming and growing our own food. Um, and the name Red Leaf Ranch actually is a play off of my partner's business. He owns a carnivorous plant nursery, and that's what brought us to Tennessee. It's called Red Leaf Exotics, so I thought Red Leaf Ranch would just be a fun little play off of that. And now, as a collective, we are Red Leaf. Well, the the pandemic, uh, however you want to look at it, it taught us a lot of things about a lot of stuff, whether we like to have learned that or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I feel like it was a very rare opportunity for a lot of us to really reflect and take a good look at our life and pivot if we really had the opportunity to and and create a new normal for ourselves because when in the world is is the world going to stop for like three months again it it was a really rare opportunity and as tragic as the pandemic was i'm honestly really grateful for it it gave me the time and the space to really changed the entire direction of my life. And now I garden and I create content full time uh, because of it. I I would have to agree. I think um, for many of us, the, the pandemic was very pivotal. And I think that it, I don't want to say it was a positive thing, but definitely pivotal. People turned yes. a negative into a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yes, yes. So it sounds like you're, partner has somewhat of a green thumb if he's growing carnivorous carnivorous plants what about you what was the most intimidating thing for you when you started you know this homesteading gardening journey um did you kind of lean on to him or what what was something that was you were like i can't believe i'm about to do this and what was the most intimidating (laughs) part well i guess for me personally i mean i'm i'm so fortunate that i had the crutch that is my partner he's literally been gardening since he was a kid so He knows a lot about gardening, but he focused primarily on landscaping and uh, ornamental gardening. He's he's never really pursued growing food. So it was really my own undertaking and um, fully my own. And I guess the, the, the most intimidating thing about it was, I guess I'm the type of person that puts pressure on myself and, and, wanting to get us to a point where we were like completely self-sustaining um and and completely reliant on the garden so i guess me putting too much pressure on it was (laughs) i intimidated myself but along the way i've learned that you know failure is very much a part of the process in gardening i mean when i first started i killed so many plants (laughs) we did not eat that much from the garden that year but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I learned a lot along the way. And and something that's really cool about gardening in particular is there's this really magical thing called compost. When you kill your plants, <laughs> you throw it in the compost and you turn it into goodness. You turn it into food for the next growing season. So literally your failures become part of your success. So I thought that was a really cool, um, a really cool parallel to see within gardening and, and reflected back at life in that way. 
Fantastic. So um, you had a, a book recently come out, Gardening for Abundance, Your Guide to Cultivating a Bountiful Veggie Garden and a Happier Life. Can you yes. tell us um, for our listeners, maybe something that will pique their interest, interest them to um, pick up a copy and just a little bit more about your book? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, through my gardening journey, I, I've i realized how much the garden reflects the ways we should take care of ourselves. The way that we tend to a garden reflects in so many ways how we should tend to ourselves and our communities, the people we care about. Um, and I've learned so much about gardening along the way. So in the book, I'm teaching the very basics, the fundamentals of how to garden, but I'm taking it a step further and sharing the teachings that the garden has taught me on a more spiritual and holistic levels uh, level on how to take care of ourselves, um, how to ground yourself, how to align yourself with the mindset of abundance. So no matter what life throws your way, you know, you, you, you have a really good head on your shoulders and you know, you're going to navigate through it. And it's all part of the plan. It's just, it, 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 I'm teaching you all about abundance, not just in the garden, but in everyday life as well. Well, and, and there's different types of people. There's people that, well, okay, I'm just going to go work 40 hours, come home and do my thing. And there's people such as you that you create your own destiny. You've got to drive yes. where, yeah, failure happens, but only failure, failure can only happen so much because I got to make this thing work because yes. I, it's me and nobody else I can rely on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've always been that way. You know, um, if life, if you are unsatisfied with your life, it is honestly your responsibility to change it, to make it look, to make it be the way that you want your life to be. Um, you, you have to take action. You have to take action. And the garden is a great reflection of that because if you do not take action, you will not get a good harvest. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and the mindset of our, of, our, of our past generations, well, this is the way it's always been. You go and you have this kind of job as a real job, and you do that, and you come home, and you just deal with it, whether you like it or not. Those days are over. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I, our generation is very headstrong, and, and they won't settle for anything less than what they truly desire. Um, and we, we live in such a fascinating time, such a unique time in our history where thanks to technology and social media and the internet, you can create literally whatever life you want for yourself. Um, you just have to want it. Right. You just have to believe it. You just have to desire it. You have to take action, take the steps towards it. Well, let's, let's talk about your home, uh, homesteading journey here. What is something that you are looking most forward to in your journey? Maybe not, maybe this year or, or five years down the road. What's the, what's the thing you look forward most to it? Uh, honestly, uh, starting this whole garden, uh, this whole garden journey and, and homestead journey, you know, it's been such a dream being able to create such a beautiful space, grow all this wonderful food, um, for my partner and I, but quickly I realized something that I was lacking within it was community and our family. Um, we love sharing and, and community is such a big part of gardening as well. Like you get such an overabundance of food. You want to share it with your family. Um, so honestly, what I'm looking forward to the most is expanding our homestead. So that is big enough to house, um, family like my mom um my younger brother even and also create space for people to visit um and host retreats as well to inspire and teach people um in real time in the physical not just in the digital world um how how to pursue a life like this um and it's really cool because outside of just the vegetable gardening you know we also have my partner's uh, carnivorous plant nursery uh we we focus a lot on um encouraging and building biodiversity to encourage and rebuild habitat for wildlife so there's a lot going on here so we're really we really want to create a space where people can really tap into that and nurture that that um that uh curiosity for nature and it's all things that you personally you enjoy it's not something you're dreading doing it's something you wake up and, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and can't wait to get started absolutely exactly and you know, the work is so much bigger than ourselves, you know, like the way the world is right now with, with climate and, 
and just, just the way the world is right now, we need to turn to nature more than ever because it is, she is the answer for a lot of the problems that we are having. And we have to reattune ourselves to be more collaborative with nature rather than trying to control her. I feel like this whole desire for control and consumption has really led the planet to <laughs> the course that it's on. Um, but if we work in harmony with nature, that, that that is the answer for sure. I definitely couldn't agree more. So what is something that you learned and you knew you had to learn the lesson for yourself in homesteading? Just like a lot of us, you know, people can say this is what's going to happen X, Y, Z, but you're like, I need to figure this out for myself. What is one of those lessons that you've learned in this process? Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's very interesting, the dynamic of just rural living and homesteading, you know, having grown up in, in Chicago, I also lived in San Francisco for a short time um, and then lived in New York. Something about big city, big cities is that they have their own pace. They have countless opportunities for you to tap into and, and hone in on, but rural living, <laughs> um, <laughs> There is no pace. <laughs> you really have to create it for yourself. And when embarking on the homestead journey, you quickly realize, you know, especially if you want to start um, an edible garden or taking care of animals um, or building a business off of it, all of it is dependent on you, your drive, your motivation. Um, so I guess learning how to how to be more responsible was was the biggest lesson. Like literally everything depends on you on a homestead. And that can be very overwhelming um, or very daunting to some, but there is a beauty in that because you are in complete control of everything that's happening. Everything that happens is literally of your own creation. And that's something really special. And, and for people who have lived in the city like you have and go to that rural area, you experience a silence that you've never experienced oh before. Oh my gosh, yeah. Not to, yes, yeah. The nighttime is so silent. Also, we can actually see the night sky here, yeah. which is on like the first time I saw the full moon and we could actually see outside at night because everything was illuminated by the full moon. It literally brought me to tears. It was so beautiful. I had never experienced that before. Also, there's so many birds here. <laughs> it's so nice not having to listen to people yelling outside or cars honking or subway trains or who knows what else. Like the sounds of nature are so beautiful and so peaceful and so grounding. Um, but it, it can be, it can be a little surreal, surreal, you know, uh, learning to navigate through the silence or being still in that way. Um, especially, I. Funny enough, that was one of the challenges I had to navigate through was learning how to be still, learning that it's okay to be still and not feeling guilty about not doing anything and just allowing yourself to like rest and relax and be because that's something um, I, I really never got to experience living in a city. It was go, go, go all the time. Well, Brian, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered us. How can people find out more about you, the Red Leaf Ranch? How can they find your book? Uh, where where do we go for those locations? Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, well, if you want to uh, find me, learn more about me and my, my journey and embark on this journey with me, you can find me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, we are Red Leaf Ranch on all those channels. Um and if you want to learn more about the book, you can head on over to our website, redleafranch.com, and we have our section, Gardening for Abundance, for you to see everywhere that the book is available. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time and your education to Holly and myself and all of our listeners. We, we thank you very much for that. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Absolutely. And when